What do you know about the pits? Well, I know absolutely nothing about the pits. I'm very excited and nervous at the same time. Shall I show you what it can really do? Now we're going backwards, Wooshka. Whee! This is Infinite Aviators, sharing aviation experiences, hints and tips, and interviewing great aviator minds. Today, I'm taking my co-host Amir Zogi flying in the pit special. Amir, what do you know about the pits? Well, I know absolutely nothing about the pits. What I do know is I'm very excited and nervous at the same time because of the tail wheel. That uh, makes me a little bit shaky. I've never experienced that before. Okay, well, I've got about 4,000 hours in the pits and you've got none. So that should make for an interesting aviation adventure. You're right about the tail wheel. This aeroplane has a reputation for, for being very difficult to land. So really the reason why is because of the way it's designed. It's got a narrow track undercarriage, it's got a, a short wheelbase, and uh, the weight is kind of tended to be weighted to the rear of the aeroplane while it's on the ground. So all of that makes it as, as essentially act like a shopping trolley on the ground when you're trying to taxi it. <laughs> when you try and land it, it really doesn't want to go in a straight line for too long. So the pilot really has to control it on the ground. However, in the air, it's a different story. This aeroplane really does what you want it to do, and it's a, a great aeroplane to fly. So we should have some fun today. Well, mate, I really appreciate you taking me up in this. This has been a dream of mine to go into a pits. I used to see this aircraft all the time in the airport and uh, in fact it's what drew me to do aerobatics so yeah I think we're gonna have some fun yeah let's go you. do it awesome the pits was originally designed by Curtis Pitts back in 1943-44 designed as a single seater the little s1 was referred to as the little stinker because Curtis Pitts used to put a picture of a skunk on the front the s1 is what made the pits brand famous the S2 was the first of the two-seaters, the S2A, and it was referred to as the Big Stinker, and it first flew in 1967 and was type certified in 1971. The plane we're flying today, Foxtrot, 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 or Triple Fox as we call it, that was built in 1978 in Afton, Wyoming in the United States. In 1972, the US aerobatic team won the world championships flying exclusively pit specials. While most people will learn how to fly a tailwheel aeroplane in something other than a pits, it's not unusual for us to teach people to fly a tailwheel in a pit special for the first time. It's quite an achievement to be able to do your first tailwheel solo flight in a pit special. All right, off we go. Let's see how Amir handles the pits. First time in the pits and also first time in an open cockpit. I, I forgot it's an open cockpit. I mean, I, this is going to be amazing. Alright Amir, off we go. So what's the first thing you notice being in the front there? Oh, visibility. It's uh, completely different. You can't see in front of you. That adds to the fun nature of trying to land this aeroplane. In the back here I've got a slightly better view. I sit a little bit further back but uh, it still makes it challenging. I can't, I can't see directly in front of you but what you'll see when you taxi this aeroplane, we just do a little zigzag left and right, mainly so we can look down the, the side of the aeroplane and see what's in front of us. Yeah, right. The thing about taxiing a tailwheel aeroplane is anticipation. You don't want to do anything last minute or in a hurry. You've got to think about where the aeroplane's going and where it's going to be in, a, in the next little while, and you've got to start to put the inputs in a little bit earlier than what you would on a tricycle undercarriage aeroplane. Establishing the so what we'll do with the takeoff is we'll go to full power on the runway and then shortly after that I'm going to raise the tail. There it is, so I push forward on the stick to get the tail up. Now you've got a better view but I've still got your head in the way. 
a triple fox. At 65, I'm going to rotate. There it is there. They're off the ground. It's flying like a normal plane. A positive rate of climb. We've got, been given an early crop fence, so we're just going to turn early. That is awesome. If you want, you can take over, heading over. All right, I'll have control. So now, in a tandem aeroplane, you can see the importance of the handover takeover procedure because unless I make sure that you're, you give me a verbal that you've got control of the aeroplane, it's hard for me to tell who's, who's flying. Yeah, for sure. Risky T3. But what you'll notice now is one of the biggest differences is we are way out of balance here in the climb. You need to get some more right pedal on. Way bit too much. As you can see, it's a lot more sensitive than the Robert. Way more sensitive. And the rudder is very powerful. It's got a very short coupling, so a little movement makes a big difference. All right, so we're going for a loop? Yeah, let's go for a loop. Bit too much left pedal. Got to wait for it to accelerate a little bit. Get the wings level over the top here a bit. Wing down. All right, we de-stalled it there. So it's a bit of a different beast, isn't it, to the to the Robin? <laughs> yeah. All right, shall I show you what it can really do? Go for it. Taking over. You have control. Firstly, what I want to do, I just want to check the inverted oil system. We just roll upside down to make sure that that's working okay. You're going to hang in your straps, okay? In, a, in an open cockpit, it's an interesting experience. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Yep, inverted oil works okay. <laughs> Looks cool, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We are lucky. We're going to start this sequence off with a one and a half turn spin. Don't bring the power back to idle. We keep it balanced. We'll spin to the left. Here we go. And around we go. There's half. One and a half, we stop it there like that, and we're going to go into a roll off the top, so we need about 140 knots for the roll off the top. We pinch it around, touch a rudder over the top as we slow down, and we roll. She gets a little bit squirrely there at the top. We're going to wait for 80 knots before we do a half flick, pull through for a split edge. Here we go, we go full flick, and stop, and pull through. Now we'll go into a half reverse turbination. About 135, 140 for that. Up to the 45, we stop, and roll. One, two, and we'll pull that through into a half turbination. Just let it fall through initially, then pull tighter at the bottom as it accelerates. And we need about 135. Up and over the top. We want to float it over the top so we round it out while we're slow. Stop it on the 45 down, which is there. I'm going to do quarters. One, two, three, four. And do a Chinese loop. I'll do a four point roll at the top of the We'll start the roll here, we go one, two, three, four, trying to keep it round at the top, into one of my favourites, so I still get a thrill out of these, we're going to go up for a tail fly, so get a nice vertical there, we can quarter roll it on the way up, and just as we start to talk, I'll bring the power back. Now we're going backwards. Wooshka! Whee! Oh, that was a good one. So a wing over. One. 
last few manoeuvres, we're going to do a hammer hit there. So we'll go up, I'll do a quarter roll on the way up, and a quarter on the way down if I can, there it is, we'll kick it. A quarter on the way down. And we do three of a four point roll, one, two, three and four. And we'll finish with a flick roll. Here we go. And there you have the little sequence I do with my passengers. That is awesome, mate. <laughs> Thanks for that. No worries. So we're coming up to about two miles on the final here for Australian approach from my 1-1 Town. I'm going to start to bring the power back to just around about 15 inches of manifold pressure. And this one's working out quite nice. Judge the bank angle now, so I come out on the centre line. And what I'm going to do, I actually turn through the centre line to get my side slip angle, and then just roll on the bank and stop it there. So I can see the runway from down the back here. Now I'm just adjusting my speed. Now, aim point's good. Speed's coming back nicely. Closing the throttle, coming off the slip and getting to the landing attitude. There it is there. Wait for the wheels to touch down, a little skip and a bounce. Stick goes hard back once we're on the ground, feet on the brakes, just Jim. And you can tell I'm doing a little dance just to keep it straight. Triple box ground, taxi to Red Baron. Red Baron, thanks, Triple Box. That was that was insane. I loved it. It was a complete different beast. Um, I'm looking forward to getting endorsed to this one, man. I am learning how to do a half Cuban today. Ah, you let the nose drop. Stop rolling. Stop rolling. Ah, too steep. Ease it. Stop. Ah. 